Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we're talking about the uh, three baptisms. Baptism, you know, where you're born again, baptism of regeneration, and then water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we left off on the last session where we had gone home, and there was no feelings. We had asked Jesus into our heart. It was all by faith. Wednesday was dead. And then Thursday morning, when I got, come into the kitchen, Kathleen did not greet me by saying good morning or anything like that. She says, Jim, you're not cussing anymore. And when she said that, something, you know, I'm 29 years old, I'm not a child, and something inside of me, actually I could feel it move, <laughs> you know, whatever. And I realized that Jesus was inside of me. How he got in there, I don't know. But he got into my side of me. My nature had changed like they said it would. And I realized now that uh, I'd never, ever take his name in vain again. And you know, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I've never taken his name in vain again from that point on. And the other thing, now all of a sudden, Kathleen and I both had a hunger to get to know God better. And, and, and of course, we knew that would be by reading the Bible. And so we, that day, then on that Wednesday, or Thursday morning, rather, we, we began to read the Bible, and it was like Jesus was talking to us. It was amazing. And then found out, you know, later, of course, that the, world, the Word of God is a living Word, because Jesus is called the Word, and the Word is Jesus, and the Word is God. And so it was Jesus talking to us through the Bible, which is a living Bible. It's a living book. <laughs> and, you know, we, we started reading that Bible and that's the way it worked then until all the way up to when Kathleen went home at age 58. And um, one month short of our 58th wedding anniversary. But you know, we never backslid. Uh, I never burned out. You know, I always, you know, I would uh, do my best to, uh, you know, to, uh, what am I trying to say? You know, to pace myself. And so I never had to do a sabbatical or like I said, get burned out or backslid or nothing. Jesus was alive for us for our entire walk. Now we had we had we had challenges. That's all part of life. And we worked through these obstacles and challenges and what have you. But we always had we never lost Jesus. He was involved in everything. And uh, and and it seemed like at times he wasn't there, but we knew by faith he was <laughs> because we had the word in our heart. And so it was amazing. And we were 20, both 29 years old at the time that we received Jesus into our lives. But I'll never forget, it was all by faith. That's how it started. And you know what? Most of our life, we didn't have any special feelings or anything. But we knew that by faith, we had meditated on the Word, we'd been confessing the Word, we knew that His Word lived inside of us. And there are times when we'd have some, you know, feelings or whatever, special applications, but the majority of the time, it was all by faith. And we meditated on the Word, and we knew that um, He lived inside of us by His Word, and, of course, by the Spirit. All right, so that's how that happened. So biblical faith played an important part in us receiving Jesus and staying saved, <laughs> because we were taught you had to do it by faith, even though at that point we didn't understand how faith worked or anything like that. It was just something they told us, and we just believed it. All right, so then, we move on then, and uh, shortly after that, I would, I would, you know, we were introduced to some other people, and um, so maybe several weeks later, maybe, you know, by then we had met people who were, you know, they were part of the charismatic movement, and so they were uh, born again and filled with the Spirit. Now, the couple that led us to the Lord, there was another couple our age that had just come back from California, some Bible school out there. I don't remember what the name of it was. But they said, this uh, couple that led us to the Lord, their church did not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But this couple came back, and all they would say, this couple, since they've come back from California, they have such joy in their lives. And, of course, they were um, more like our age, I said. And so the couple that led us to the Lord, they were older than us, and they, and they arranged for us to meet this couple. And, 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 of course, the couple invited us to come to their home for dinner. 
So Kathleen and I went to their home, and of course it was just the four of us, the couple and Kathleen and I. And I tell you, we no sooner entered their home, and all they talked about for the whole evening, even while we're eating, was the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, then, before the night was over with, I know that uh, they laid hands on us and prayed for us to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, um, and uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, my head, you know, it's one thing, you know, your mind, if it's not renewed, because remember the scripture says in Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, not only when you're born again, uh, you know, your, mind, your mind doesn't change when you're born again, and neither does your body, it's still sinful flesh. But you, as a human spirit, of course, you have the nature of God. But now what we have to do is renew our minds to agree with God's word. Now the mind, you know, never wants to give up. It wants to control everything. And remember we said earlier that a counterfeit of faith is mental assent. We're to believe in our heart, not with our head. Well, the problem I had, my mind was not renewed and it was strong. It didn't want to submit to God's word. So I didn't pray in tongues when I, that night. So I went home, not praying in tongues. I don't remember what the deal was with Kathleen, though. If she spoke, spoke right, right away or not, I can't remember. But I remember the next day, I'm on my knees, and I got my mouth open, you know, waiting to speak in tongues. Well, I didn't realize that I had to cooperate with God by faith. I had to believe that they shared Romans 8 with us, you know, where it's the Holy Spirit praying within us, it's in our heart. He lives in our heart. And that when you pray in an unknown tongue, you're speaking from your heart, not your head. And so I got my, um, I still must see myself kneeling by the bed, my mouth open, waiting for something to happen. Well, you know, when you speak in English, you can hold your mouth open all day long. But unless you make sounds and then form those words with your mouth, there'll never be an English language. And it's the same with speaking in tongues. You have to furnish the sound, and by faith, you believe the Holy Spirit will form the words for you. And they're supernatural. It's a supernatural language. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through us as a human spirit. And so finally, I got enough courage. I just, I don't know, I, I think it was like two words I spoke in a sound that I'd never heard before. I finally just forced myself. All right, here's the sound. And, and, I, and I furnished this, the sound, and I believe that the Holy Spirit gave me two words. And I was so excited. I remember that I got into my car and I drove around town just speaking those two words. And I would have these two words in my prayer, you know, in part of my prayer language. And then I remember at one of the charismatic meetings that in, we were every Tuesday night at the Salvation Army, we'd get together. And I know they encouraged me to yield to the Holy Spirit, and let him develop this prayer language. So it came a little slow for me. So after that, I was determined that I'd furnish the sound and believe the Holy Spirit. I would, uh, he would form the words, and I'd have more language. And sure enough, I would get more words and then more words, and pretty soon, after just developing it, I had to learn to develop that language in my part. It didn't. Some people, you pray for them, and boom, they're speaking in tongues, just a fluent language right off the bat. But it didn't come that way for me. It was by faith I believed I got those first two words. By faith I believe if I yield, furnish the sound, and allow the Holy Spirit to form those words, it would come. And so I had to learn to develop that by faith. Because you didn't feel anything and all of that. It's by faith. And I'm praying from my heart, not my head. By faith. And of course my head, my mind, does not like to do things it can't control. And so the important thing is, your mind, you bypass your mind. Now, if you limit your prayer life just to your mental or mind speaking English, your prayer life will be greatly limited. All right, I don't know, I see my time is up. So we'll catch you on the next session. In Jesus' name, amen.